Hi, good evening everyone. My name is Kim Dorman and I serve as the Community Engagement Coordinator for the Princeton Public Library. It's my pleasure to introduce tonight's artist's talk from the Princeton Sankofa Stitchers Modern Quilt Guild about the exhibit they currently have on display with us, which has a title that I love, Her Story in Stitches. I want to start by thanking you all for joining us, both in person in our community room and virtually on Zoom. Tonight's hybrid program will run for about an hour in total, and there will be an opportunity for audience members, both in person and virtually, to ask questions. We have someone on the live, someone on the live stream monitoring the Q&A function for questions for the presenter and for presenters, and for those who are here in person, simply raise your hand to be handed a microphone. Just a few housekeeping notes, I'd like to quickly mention that this room is T-Coil enabled. So if you have a T-Coil enabled device, please feel welcome to switch it on at this time. Uh, we ask that everyone who would like to speak use the microphones, um, otherwise the uh, loop system will not pick it up. The library asks that everyone who comes into the library wear a mask for the duration of their stay, unless they're using the cafe. At tonight's event, the library is permitting speakers to remove their masks when they are on stage. Um, to make sure that everyone feels safe, we have placed the audience beyond the CDC recommended distance. Uh, this is the first of our programs celebrating Women's History Month. To look at the resource guide created by our public humanities specialist, Madeline Rosenberg, and learn more about additional programs and resources that the library will be offering throughout this month, you can visit our website. And now for this evening's program. I was thrilled when the Princeton Sankova Stitchers uh, Modern Quilt Guild agreed to do an exhibit with the Princeton Public Library. Those of you who have seen the works on display will not be surprised that everyone who has come to see the exhibit has been wowed by the work, the stories, and the diversity of quilts. In the first paragraph of the description it says, quilts are a form of storytelling and a means of capturing history. You will learn how true that is throughout this evening's presentations. Um, and I will say that um, many of the stitchers, uh, uh, many of the quilters have their brought quilts. Um, I will be uh, holding some of them, but I'm wearing white gloves, and so we ask that nobody, don't touch somebody else's quilt, <laughs> uh, basically. Uh, so with that, without further ado, please allow me to introduce Wanda Jikandi, who serves as co-president for the Guild. Please join me in welcoming Wanda Jikandi. Hi, good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming out. Thank you, Kim, for inviting our guild to participate in our very first hybrid event. And I hope we'll forgive any nervousness or anxiety on our parts as we do this. Um, I'd like to begin by talking about my journey as a quilter, which began when I inherited this quilt, which is about behind me, which is about 100 years old. Um, made by my great-great-aunt in Arkansas. Um, I looked at this quilt for many years and just marveled at its construction, but it took me a while to actually to de decide to learn quilting. Um, I've sewn and been a crafter for many years, and my friend Michelle here and I, and I were looking at something new to start, and we decided to quilt. So we started quilting by buying uh, children's books on how to start quilting. And it's pretty much been downhill or uphill from there. Um, we joined a modern quilt guild, a local modern quilt guild, which is a wonderful thing to belong to, a guild of women who help you grow. But we found that we needed a bit more diversity. Um, and a group of us began to get together, a group of African-American women, starting at my house. I think we started off as about four or five of us. And we would sew regularly, and we would do some charity sewing for different community organizations. And we said, you know, let's see if we stick with this for a year, how it goes. And if it does, we'll formalize the group. So we stuck together for the year, um, gave ourselves a name, Sankofa. Um, which is very meaningful to us and started to grow from there. Um, we started noticing quilters everywhere in the community, you know, local fabric stores, on the streets, anywhere there were quilts. Are you a quilter? Uh, would you like to join us? And uh, we kind of grew, we kind of grew to where we are from there. 
We're a modern quilt guild in that we look at um, a lot of the elements known to modern quilters in our quilts, but by no means are all of the quilts you'll see in our exhibition modern. I'd like to show you an example of what might be considered, or actually what is considered a modern quilt. Kim, could you hold this one up for me? Yes, that one. Okay, so um, if you hold it, oh, if you hold it so that you're, yeah, it's upside down. Sorry. That way, yeah, hold it that way. <laughs> She's doing very well. Okay, so this um, is an example of a modern quilt, and the modern elements in this quilt would be that I took a single quilt block and enlarged it to actually be the majority of the quilt. There's a lot of what's called negative space where the quilting is done. Can anyone else who's a modern quilter tell me another element? Lindsay, Q? <laughs> vibrant, colors. I, <laughs> vibrant colors. Thank you. Um, so as I said, this one isn't um, on display as most of, because it's here and most of our quilts aren't necessarily modern. So I wanted to show you an example of a modern one. Thank you. Did you, did you say that it's highly abstract? I'm sorry? Did you say that it, did anyone mentioned that it's highly abstract? Oh, you, you consider it? Yeah, thank you. OK, great, thanks. OK, and all right. Um, this is one of my quilts that's actually in the exhibit. Um, Janami and God We Trust, AKA Where's Your G-Spot, not a modern quilt, considered modern traditional. Um, a very common log cabin pattern. What makes it different is the use of um, hand dyed Ghanaian batiks that I incorporated into the, the design. Um, Sankofa Childhood Memories of the Colors of Baltimore is a Kawandi quilt made in the st style of the Sidi quilters, who are an African group of quilters um, on the Indian subcontinent. And this type of quilt is completely hand quilted around the circumference from the outside in. So now I'm going to turn it over to Michelle Tuck Ponder, um, one of the founding members of our guild. Michelle, you ready? Absolutely. Oh, we have to go back. Where's Michelle? Back one more. Oh. <laughs> and then you have the clicker. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Good evening, everybody. I'm Michelle Tuck Ponder, as Wanda has um, so graciously introduced me. Uh, I started quilting with Wanda. We were neighbors on the same street, and Wanda decided that we needed a hobby. And so we uh, decided to um, go to Joanne Fabrics when they were having a 50% off sale and a coupon, and um, try our luck at buying some fabric and sewing things together. Um, and it has become, I won't characterize it as an obsession, but I will say um, when I'm not doing a lot of other things that I do, the thing I most like doing is cutting fabric up and sewing it back together. <laughs> I've been asked uh, to talk about, should I show my quilt first or should I? It's up to so, you, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna start by showing a quilt um, that, now, Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was like trying to admit there's questions in the. No worries. Her white glove. Don't worry about it. You're okay, Kim. So that's an actually a portrait quilt of my mom, um, Mabel, Anna Mabel Tuck, and I was very interested in doing something different uh, and expanding my skills, and so. This is just fabric cut out from a portrait of one of a photograph of her, and it's quilted, and it's um that's that's her image, so um, very very fun to do. Um, probably the most thing I'm most proud of in terms of uh, a quilt that I've made, and now I'm working on a, a quilt um, of my dad. 
So I've been... The touching at the back is beautiful. Yeah, that's just... I was, I'm actually supposed to cover that up, I think, but, you know, I'm lucky to get quotes done anyway, so... <laughs> so I've been asked to talk a little bit about why a black and brown women's quilt guild. And as Wanda mentioned earlier, most of us are in another quilt guild that is not predominantly um, black and brown women. And, and we, we enjoy our participation and, and we get a lot of out of it. But the one thing that, that we're all very acutely aware of is that we need to maintain a sense of community. And we have a lot of different communities, um, but guilds in particular are a way to build and maintain community with like-minded people. And Wanda talked about our gatherings um, when we got together and we sewed and we did projects. The other thing we do is eat. <laughs> we always eat. And one of the ways to break bread with traditional African-American food, with people who really know how to make it very well and enjoy that fellowship and camaraderie that we don't often get in our daily lives, especially living in predominantly white communities, um, that is also something that Sankofa Stitchers provides for, for its members. You know, African Americans, African Americans have made quilts and have had quilters who've made significant contributions to both maintaining past and present history. And their quilts, if you've ever seen them, are symbols of culture, community, and history. So like other groups, um, and you know in our history, Black quilters gathered to sew together to make quilts, share news, and share knowledge about quilting. We hold a unique place in American history, and many accomplishments of African Americans have been ignored or overlooked. Sankofa Stitchers, like hundreds of other African American guilds around the country, gather to continue that tradition in the art and craft of quilt making specifically. It is our objective to pass along the tradition to a wider community through teaching, sharing, exhibiting, and promoting our craft. So we're really happy that the library and other uh, institutions around Mercer County and around the state and country have embraced uh, this art and it inspires and encourages us to continue doing it and to make sure that that tradition continues. Thank you, Michelle. Next up is Maida Coles Galloway. because of the uh, blocks that we had. We had a block exchange. We picked a theme, and the theme had to do with blocks that were related to African American life. And so with our block exchange, every person in the guild at that time uh, had the same pattern, but each quilt maker would say, well, here are the fabrics that I want you to use to make these blocks. So when I gathered all the blocks together, um, I organized them in this manner. Now there are some blocks in there that I actually created myself and designed. Um, and there are some extra blocks that I've used that are traditional blocks. And um, this quilt is called Africa Flies Home. And you can see which direction the geese are actually going, okay, to go back home to Africa. So that was a lot of fun. Um, 
And there are a lot of, there's a lot of symbolism in this quilt. If you take a look at each individual block, I think it's um, kind of clear as to what we're trying to represent with each of these blocks. Any questions about this quilt? Can we take the questions after? Okay. All right. We'll take the questions after. Yeah, I'm going to talk. Sorry. So this one is very um, traditional in the layout. It's very even. It's, you know, if you look at it, they're rows. And, but all the blocks are my interpretation of, sorry about that. Um, all the blocks are my interpretation of how I feel about being an African American, okay? And so this is more of a traditional type of quilt. The quilt that I'm gonna show you is created more in the style that I like to quilt. Um, this is an original pattern. I created it, I designed it. This one is called Morse Code, um, Ubuntu, Hidden Messages. And I was inspired by Desmond Tutu. I heard him speak a long, long time ago, and he said this one phrase, and it stuck in my brain forever. And it was, we are because, I am because you are. And he tried to explain to people that we're all responsible for each other. We need to support each other in everything that we do. And so in this quilt, those messages are actually in Morris Cone uh, in the red. And if you would look at the quilt very closely, all the messages about <clears throat> support and empowerment, they're all quilted into the quilt. All right. Um, okay, that's all right. With my quilting journey, I started quilting when my daughter was an infant, and I decided that I wanted to make her a baby quilt. And the first quilt that I made was an Irish chain quilt, which is very, very traditional. It was in red and white. I finished it. Absolutely hated it. Oh. And then um, I said, well, there's got to be more to it than this. Uh, so I took a class, and it was a sampler class. And at that time, all the quilts were pastel colors, baby blue and pink and things like that. And when I finished my quilt, my quilt was orange, black, and cream, and, uh, and brown. And so when we had to hang all the quilts out on the line, everybody was drawn to mine because it looked very different. But I wasn't happy with quilting because it was too much in a box. And I said, you know, I, I don't think I really want to pursue this craft. And it wasn't until I had a chance to meet um, a G's Ben quilter and I saw the quilts, I realized that this is what I need to do. I need to be a more modern quilter. And at that time, they weren't really, the modern quilt movement hadn't really started. Um, we were still into contemporary quilts, which is the latter part of the 80s, the beginning of the 90s. So the modern quilt movement was just coming onto the scene. But um, I enjoy modern quilting. I enjoy designing my own quilts. Uh, I have one great grandmother who actually was a quilter. I actually have her quilt. She started the quilt when she was eight years old in 1888. Mm -hmm. And the quilt has been covered several times. But if you were to look at the outside of the quilt, it is extremely modern, the way she put the pieces together. So that is my journey, and that's how I got to where I am today. Okay, Fire Escape, which is now pictured, is another of Maida's um, quilts on display. Now I'd like to move on to The Laundress by Leslie Rackard, one of our members out of the South End in Boston, Mass. Many of you may have seen this quilt atop the fireplace. Um, beautiful example of applique, and Leslie recorded a short video
I sound like I'm echoing. Yeah, Am we're I? turning it down. <laughs> Um, so Leslie recorded a video to talk about her quilt and her journey. Now what do I do to get it to play? Just hit it one more time. Hello, my name is Leslie Ricard and I live in Boston, Massachusetts. My representation of her story in stitches, I would say, it is a labor of love. In the 1940s, my aunt Maggie Bell left Daytona Beach, Florida and moved to Poughkeepsie, New York to work in a summer resort as a laundress. It was to help support her sister and her family. She migrated north as a means of survival, which is represented by the North Star in the quilt's background. Back then, all you had was family to fall back on. Aunt Maggie ironed everything, the shirts, the sheets, the pillowcases, the hand towels, underwear, but she did it well. The laundress dress was one of auntie's old house dresses. You're looking at auntie standing in front of a window with flowers. She would often say, don't buy me flowers when I'm dead. I can't smell them when I'm gone. My mother is also represented here. She worked as a domestic worker. Look closely and you would notice a laundry basket with a washboard. You would think using a washboard with bells and have soap would be hard on her hands and back, but my mother didn't mind at all. At least that's what she said. She called washing her quiet time. This quilt represents me, the quilter. The laundress was made in remembrance of auntie and my mother. Thank you. Next up, we'd like to introduce Paulette File. Um, and this is her quilt currently on display, My Kind of Town. Paulette? Okay. I've got a couple. <laughs> you have Madame Kim here. This one. Okay. <laughs> well, let me tell you what I'm going to show you first. Hello. Um, I came to quilting by way of learning how to sew clothes first. I started learning to sew when I was a kid um, in a small town in the Midwest because at that time it was cheaper to sew than to buy ready-made clothes. And plus in a small town there's just uh, very few stores uh, that were available uh, to give if you wanted something unique or different than everyone else. My grandmother sewed. Um, she had a a singer with a treadle uh, pedal, which um, my mother now has. It's not in great shape, unfortunately, but we still have it in the family. Um, my mother sewed all of her school clothes, all of our back to school clothes, and I learned how to sew as well as my sisters uh, too. I wasn't drawn to quilting though, because all I knew were utilitarian quilts. I mean, we had them on our, our beds at home. I saw them as just something you use to keep warm. Uh, never thought about them as an art form at all. And in that, I was thinking more of traditional quilts. Um, I have a quilt that my grandmother made, and it looks nothing like um, the ones that uh, we make today. But fast forward, a whole lot of years <laughs> and a friend said hey you're looking for um, another craft let's go to this place where they're doing uh, a quilting exhibit and I was thinking traditional quilting nah, nah that's not me but I went anyway because I had nothing better to do and we made a little simple um, hot hot pad and I was, and then I saw all the fabrics and all the designs and all the things that were possible um, with modern quilts. 
And little by little, I became hooked. And I really enjoy it. I've done a lot of crafts in the past, um, but this is my current favorite. The, um, the quilt that's shown there, I made it from a pattern, um, but I was drawn to it because it was whimsical, it was cute, it was also challenging. It's made in uh, a technique called um, paper piecing. So that was a challenge because I had done very little piece, big piecing it, um, before then. I like that I was able to customize it. So if you'll see my school says Princeton. Um, I have a Paulist fabric store, and of course there's a sale. <laughs> and there is a, a donut shop named after my son and his dog. So, um, so when I said, okay, narrow down, what do you want to show? That was the one that I wanted to show the most. But I brought um, two other examples of work that I've done. Let's see. I don't know if you can hold it by yourself. I'll hold it. Okay. The first one is generically <laughs> called a snowflake, uh, <laughs> but it appealed to me because it is um, very modern in the colors, in the fact that it's um, a partial snowflake off to the center. There's a lot of um, negative space, so if you get a chance to see it up close, you'll see the quilting uh, was done by a long arm and not by me. Uh, it has um, snowflake designs uh, in the pattern. So I, I really like the simplicity of it and the cleanness of it. So I was happy to make that one. And on the back, I even happened to get um, some flannel that has snowflake design. And since this will primarily be used in the winter, it just seemed made for this quilt. <laughs> I don't know if there is a upside down, but thank goodness <laughs> you get all this yourself. Um, this is a, another one that I, I made. It's um, from a class uh, showing people how to use up a lot of scraps because as you can imagine, by the time you've cut up all these pieces of fabric, you wind up with a lot of pieces you're um, not going to use and you absolutely don't throw them out. You then cut them up even smaller and make something like these uh, scrappy diamonds. It's also considered modern because uh, it's not in a straight grid and it has bright colors and it has a lot of negative space. So, thanks. Okay. You putting them there? we'd like to share is the library quilt by uh, guild member Crystal Cochran and I'm going to read the artist statement um, that she has written. The scales in the poodle are applique pieces sewn on the white background fabric. I used my embroidery machine to quilt this project. I decided to create this quilt in February of 21 for several reasons. I wanted to use my volu voluminous stash of fabric and I wanted to hang a quilt in my office when I returned to work after the pandemic. Um, Crystal did something really special in creating a tutorial for this quilt and invited people to quilt along with her, teaching them how to make this quilt. Next, I'd like to introduce Victoria Meisel. Victoria? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. I'm going to read my statement. My inspiration for quilting started when I was a little girl, watching my mother sew clothes for my siblings and me. With the scraps from new clothes and old garments, she made patchwork quilts. I was further inspired by my daughter Jody, 
who at the age of seven made six quills at Princeton YWCA. With the warmth and beauty of my mother's quills and the inspiration of my young daughter's creative talent, I decided to take a quilting class. Making my first quilt was the beginning of my journey as a noted quilter who, with each one of my quilts, remembers this creative gift begun by my mother and daughter. Over two years ago, I joined the Princeton Sankofa Stitchers. I took my first modern quilting class, and I made a, a map of my favorite island and homeland, Jamaica. It illustrates the area in Westmoreland, a little district called Darleston, where I was born. I am pleased that I have continued my quilting with these ladies who have exposed me to modern quilting. And I, I, I can show you um, on the map where I was born. <laughs> right here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the next quilt I'd like to share is Dear Jane in Quarantine by Guild member Mary Ellen Asu. If you haven't seen that quilt, it's hanging near the reading room in an alcove. I'd like to read what Mary Ellen has written about this quilt. Unfortunately, she couldn't be here with us tonight, but she's with us in spirit. During the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown in the spring of 2020, I needed a strategy to cope with the stresses of an abrupt change to my daily routine and work life. Piecing small blocks was a way to assuage that feeling of loss of control. The block's geometric complexities were an escape from the mundanity of being confined to the home. Next, I'd like to introduce Rosemary Briggs. a new quilter. So I was um, told about uh, Sankofa Stitchers back in 2018 and um, by Maida uh, and uh, so I began my journey into quilting. Uh, however, I was introduced to a quilter down in Alabama when I was going to college there and um, I was amazed by the fact that she made everything by hand. She didn't use a machine. So the top of the quilt was made by hand, the design on the quilt was made by hand, and uh, she sold her quilts. That was her livelihood. So it was always at the back of my mind. If I had an opportunity to learn how to quit, quilt, I was going to do that. Um, the picture that you see above here uh, is my very first quilt. And it is one in which um, I just took some fabrics that I had at home and put them together to create this. Um, I didn't have the rulers. I didn't have the patterns. <laughs> um, so what I did was take cardboard and I found out the measurements that I wanted to use and I cut the cardboard into the sizes and then put them together. I said, you did use the sewing machine for that. <laughs> and put them together. Um, to create this quilt. Um, I call it my mountains and my valleys because it kind of speaks to me a, a lot about kind of my whole life and all the changes in my life um, and the fact that at that point I was retiring and I didn't know exactly what I was going to do at that point. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention too is that um, it gave me such satisfaction to do this and I realized I was going down the right path for my retirement. And it also helped me to develop friendships and relationships that have carried me through since 2018. 
Um, so um, I really am appreciative of the opportunity to be a part of the St. Kofa Stitchers. Um, I also brought with me uh, today uh, something that I'm working on currently. Um, and this is a story quilt. So this quilt is in progress. We have to turn it up just a little bit to that. And the story quilt is really a personalized um, travel um, of my father. Um, so there are pictures and information about his journey as a Tuskegee Airman. Um, usually once a year at the barracks in downtown Trenton, they used to have a program where they featured uh, African American men and women who served in the military um, and um, they had all of the uniforms, all of the equipment um, and stories uh, about who they uh, were and um, what their position in the military and their experiences in the military. Um, unfortunately, COVID stopped that uh, program, but um, this is one of the quotes that I decided to do so that if that starts again, I will have uh, some representation of my father's um, work um, as a serviceman during the Korean War. He was a pilot. Um, unfortunately, he lost his life during the Korean War, um, but I did find some pictures of him, and, and I was two and a half at the time, so I didn't really get to know him. So I do have some pictures of my mother with him at Tuskegee uh, in Alabama and um, of some of his awards and, um, and some of the medals too that he earned as a pilot uh, during um, the Korean War. Um, so I'm still working on it a little bit and hopefully I'll have it all done and use it not only for our presentations as the Guild but also with other opportunities to present uh, information about the Tuskegee Airmen. Thank you. Scotch is by Tarshinico Taylor out of Drake at Mass. Um, it's a modern quilt in that it's an improvisational style of strips. Um, Tarsha named the quilt Butterscotch because it's her favorite candy and she's allergic to chocolate. <laughs> the next quilt is J Shapes by Guild member Janet Byard. The Shapes Quilt grew out of a desire to make larger one design blocks that were different, different but blended well. This class and pattern seemed to more than meet these needs. I also like the idea that we students were free to make borders of our own choosing or follow the pattern as written. There was also the challenge of trying to make the center of some of these blocks come together smoothly and remain as flat as possible without distorting the block itself. This quilt used curves, required some fussy cutting, which means focused um, cutting on a particular aspect of a piece of fabric. So if you see that cute little design, you cut that out, you isolate it and cut it out to incorporate it into your overall quilt. Considered a traditional quilt. It has a very traditional gil, um, grid layout where you see the two columns, um, and it also has borders. Many modern quilts don't have borders. Next, I'd like to introduce Jane Weich. I'm sure you're all impressed with the uh, PowerPoint. That's one that you found the very skinny. <laughs> Good evening. Um, first, you have to know that I am a, probably have been quilting longer than any of them. <laughs> I've been quilting for over 40 years off and on. However, they quilt rings around me. 
<laughs> this is a, a copy of a G's Ben quilt. And it's probably, I am a traditional quilter, and they let me be in the group. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know what to say about it. You have to look at it. It's got lines and everything. It's probably the only thing I've ever done like this. But anyway, it's here. <laughs> um, I started quilting when my sister was having her daughter. And I decided to take snips off of pieces of fabric or clothing that she was wearing. And I started sewing them together by hand. And the next thing I knew, I had this monstrosity of a piece that was in different shapes. And I had to have somebody square it off for me because I really didn't know what I was doing. But she wouldn't give it to me to bring tonight. And she still has it. And she's 42. <laughs> so it's in Philadelphia. <laughs> but I did bring a quilt. I had a move to Evansville, Indiana. And when I got out there, I didn't know anybody. I didn't do anything. I wasn't working. And I had to learn how to do something. So I picked up painting and quilting. So this is a traditional nine patch quilt. And it's quilted by hand. Um, as, as you can see it later, um, every stitch is, I was trying to get it about the same size as the sewing machine. And you can see it took me a long time to get that quilted. But I thoroughly enjoyed quilting it. And I like traditional blocks, traditional quilt. Um, you can see on one end of it, my dog liked it too. He's got a bite in it. <laughs> um, <laughs> And the back is just kind of paisley. I, I like paisley. I like flowers too, but paisley is more my print. I do like earth tones also. So, Maida dragged me into the Sankofa quilters, <laughs> along with the rest of the ladies. <laughs> and very often when I'm quilting now, I have to run to her house, which is not far from me, and say, how do you do this? How do you do that? And she very graciously helps me. So anyway, but I've made some lasting friends also. So thank you. I'm actually getting more comfortable with this. Can we start again? <laughs> OK, so this is the quilt Childhood Memories by Aura Downing Brown. Um, and just look at the wonderful elements of childhood in this quilt. Um, Aura writes, this quilt was part of a Princeton Sankofa Stitcher's Modern Quilt Killed Challenge to create a story quilt. The quilt tells the story of my childhood and my friend I've had for 72 years. It's an original design with applique images representing memories of the activities we enjoyed during our childhood. My friend and I consider ourselves more than friends. We're sisters. We lived in the same neighborhood for more than 20 years. We attended the same church, were baptized at the same time, and are now godparents for each other's children. And you can't see the quilt in its entirety on the screen to really appreciate, so I hope you have a chance to go upstairs and actually see it and look at the beautiful elements in person. And rounding off our presentation is Gail Mitchell. Um, Gail, I'm going to scroll. While you come up, I'll scroll to the last picture you have. Um, on exhibit are two of Gail's quilts. This one, a tribute to Faith Ringgold. And this one, the tribute to Toni Morrison. We have a nice turnout. I see a lot of familiar faces. And it's so wonderful to see all of you and to be here with my quilting sisters, who I love. I love my quilting sisters. 
Yes. Yes, thank you. And even those of you who are in the audience. Okay. I think I'm going to tell you that I started quilting in like 1989 because I loved to go to a lot of functions and I used to take a lot of little squares and have people sign them. So I started out doing signature squares and collecting them. I have a lot of quilts with famous people's signatures on them that I, of course I cannot sell. I'm not interested in the selling. And also, Faith Ringgold really got me started. I'm a retired public school teacher, and I taught English as a second language for over 30 years. And I love Faith Ringgold's Tar Beach. In fact, when this library opened, I think th the mayor, I'm sorry, I don't remember her name. <laughs> she, um, she read a, a piece, and I was able to, she was able to give it to me, and I have it somewhere in my stash. But um, on the, one of the floors in here is the mosaic of Tar Beaches, of Faith Ringgold's Tar Beach. So as you can see, I adore Faith Ringgold. In fact, she has uh, one of her retrospectives going on now at the New Museum in New York. And hopefully my husband, who is with his camera, can't do it, always seen with his camera, will take me there. <laughs> I do a lot of um, photo transfers of famous people, as you see, Toni Morrison. I love Toni Morrison too. I had an opportunity to meet and speak with her before she retired from um, Princeton University. And on this quilt, are most of her books, especially um, the book about mean people. I used to read that to my students. And one year I, um, uh, I had my students write notes and we sent them to her here at Princeton University. And on this particular quilt is a letter that her secretary uh, wrote back to us. But I love that picture, that photo of Toni Morrison. I also wanted to share with you, whether some of you know it or not, Faith Ringgold made a deck of cards. And in this, the reason, I got this deck of cards at um, a program in, at Rutgers, Rutgers Women's Center. And um, each card, it was huge. Each card was on display. And inside this deck of cards, is a note to why she created this deck of cards. Mm -hmm. I, want to, I would like to read it to you. It's very small, so I have my glasses on. Deck of Playing Cards with Box, published by the Rutgers Institute for Women in Art. The deck of playing cards constitutes a reflection on the meaning of the historic 44th presidency. The backs of the cards include an image of the White House and the words, yes, I can. <coughs> I'll just tell you, the reason why she made the deck of cards was when she was going to college in New York, she was in a group of people, and she was the only person of color. And this group of people that, she, that was supposed to make a deck of cards with her excluded Faith Ringgold. So she never had an opportunity to add her card to their deck of cards. So as an adult, she's made her complete deck of cards. There's a quilt that I would like to show you in that big polka dot. And this is what I call my most recent modern quilt. <laughs> Thank you, Wanda. <laughs> OK. You yeah, wrecked it. That's right. Just hold it. Oh. Some of us, some, many of us have, have done or working on this quilt. I wrote a poem about constructing this quilt. And it's called, Exploring the Parallel Universe 
Mystery Quilt. And it's with, it was done with engineers Ebony, Gailene, and Latifa. And here's the poem. Hopefully you can distinguish the different parts of the quilt. We join at warp speed, a world yet to be explored, leap by galactic leap. Women worldwide get ready to machine stitch into another dimension. Fabric lands and American made solids and Indonesian batiks. Yards of colors add to the quest to fashion section one, the Big Bang. Connect on cyberspace with warm-up intros and demos. Gather tools and notions, especially Jack the Ripper. <laughs> cut a piece, cut and piece together the split nine patch, the echo, the split tessellation. What a walled audition displays itself in my studio. Backdrop with flannel, ready for section two, dark matter. Cosmic colors display themselves. <coughs> Jade green, sangria, curry, capri, snow, navy and purple. Get out the clammy tube. Position those circles. Strong gravitational placement produces an angular illusion that meshes, meshes with kick-butt realism. Venture on to magnetism, earthbound with its flying geese, horizontal nose-to-wing flight. A magic realism surfaces into section three. Bursts of star clusters add to both sides of the quilt. Venture on to section four, the helix, the illusion, the western star, the drone, now the Milky Way, takes its circular shape, adds to the movement, invokes our cosmos in section five, outer space, the ultimate out-of-body destination, where the sections converge splendiferously into a glorious quilt galaxy. <laughs> And on the back, most of you should know this. This is a CD. Welcome to the universe, Neil deGrasse Tyson and J. Richard Scott of Princeton University. I took photos of it and put it on the back. There's a fabulous audio about learning about the universe, and that's what I put on the back of the book. Thank you very much. All right, so now we're going to have a Q&A. So if anyone either uh, online or in person has questions for any of our quilters, please be welcome to ask them now. Okay. <coughs> Where did you get the name of your group, Sankova? Sankova. Oh. Um, did you please speak in the mic? Oh, sorry. Is it on? Is it green? It's green. Um, Sankofa is one of the Akans symbols um, from of the three people of Ghana, um, and I'm totally messing this up. <laughs> um, but it's a symbol that is represented as either a bird, which you can see with its head turned with an egg, um, or sometimes a stylized heart, and it means to go back and get it. And we, as a guild, go back to our roots um, as African Americans to get and preserve the culture to move it forward. So we're always on a quest for preserving our history. 
Thank you. I have a question from the virtual audience. Is the guild working to engage or find the next generation of stitchers or quilters? Uh, the answer to that would be an active yes. Um, Pre-COVID, we had the opportunity to mentor a Girl Scout troop in Trenton that was affiliated with the church where we met. And one of the things we noticed about our group of girls was they really enjoyed traditional skills, such as cooking and learning to sew. So we actually taught the girls how to hand sew little mug rugs and quilt them that they, de they then donated to a charity. Um, one of our guild members has an eight-year-old daughter who is always appearing in things. So I think she's actually going to officially be our first junior member. And as COVID dis di dissipates, we'll look at more opportunities to work with and engage uh, communities. Uh, we had something that we were going to do with the Y in Trenton, but once again, um, COVID put a damper on that. But yes, we're definitely hoping to continue and pass things on. Thank you so much for being uh, here this evening. Your, your work is amazing. And your stories are so moving and, and inspirational. Um, I very selfishly am just going to throw this out to all of you. I've recently come across some um, quilt tops. They're not done yet. They're not quilted yet. I'm not a quilter. That my great grandmother made. Uh, she was born in the 1880s. And my grandmother made. She was born in 1902. They're a treasure. They're traditional. And I'm looking for anyone after this evening who want to speak with me about, you know, who to contact to start turning them into quilts that I can actually use and not just keep in a closet. So that's why I came tonight. Thank you again. I loved your stories. I have a technical question. I've made a couple of quilts myself over the years, but I looked in the Joanne Fabrics or someplace like that, and they had a, a big quilting hoop. And I wonder whether you use the backing of the fabric to maintain the uh, 90 degree angle of the fabrics underneath and use that on the quilting hoop. Most of the quilts that we actually make are made by a uh, piece on the machine. So there aren't many of us that do uh, hand quilting. Some of us are now doing what's called big stitch, uh, which is after the quilt top has been pieced by machine, then we'll go back and perhaps uh, add to, you know, the interest by using large stitches. Um, usually when you're a hand quilter, you pride yourself in very tiny stitches. and. Um, the modern ideal is to get away from that and to, to decorate with larger stitches. So um, that's probably about the only time when perhaps a person may or may not use a hoop. Um, so does that answer your question? Both did it, thank you. Does anyone actually quilt with a hoop? Does I anyone quilt with a hoop? I have a frame that a I frame, do. Yeah, yeah I have a. Um, I guess it's a vinyl frame that snaps onto the fabric, and when I'm doing a little bit of hand piecing, like when I was working on my uh, Blondie quilt, I actually used that frame, um, and it's it's a small quilt. This big the frame is probably not that large, but that's probably about the only time I'm going to do any serious hand quilting. And when, when you say that they're joined by a machine, do you mean that you join them or that by machine or that you get them joined by somebody who has a professional machine? So um, a lot of us, if I have a small quilt um, that's not larger than 60 inches, then after I've pieced my top, then I'll put my batting and my backing on and I will quilt it on my machine myself. Um, if my quilt is larger than that, then I have a tendency to send it out to a person who's a long armor, and they will quilt the design and actually put the quilt together with the stitches. There's a lot of love in the online conversation. It was stunning, beautiful, amazing. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to, oh, and then Joy Barnes says, these women are storytelling geniuses. Thank you for this conversation.
Thank you. Uh, first, first, just thank you for the love. This, this has been a wonderful presentation. It's apparent that you guys get together. You have lots of fun, uh, soul food. My question is, where are the men? <laughs> and if a man was interested, would he have to? Could he join your organization, or are there? Do you know of any men that will? Oh my gosh, we don't want to go there. <laughs> there is a there is a huge community of male quilters and black male quilters. Um, our guild is open to all. So Leighton, if you'd like to learn to quilt, you can come and learn to quilt with us. <laughs> my, my interest has certainly been peaked tonight, for sure. Yes. Lots of male quilters. In fact, I have a friend who um, has come to, uh, who's male, who's a retired school psychologist, who, I, who does a lot of quilting. So yes, it's not gendered. Thank you. I was just kidding about that. I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> Layton had tickets to a play tonight. When he heard about this, he was like, actually, I'm going to stay in town and come see the Princeton Senko for Stitchers. I found this group at the quilts just wonderful and inspiring and touching. And it, that's in part because I was married for more than half a century to a fiber person. She didn't do quilts, but she did collages and weaving. And uh, one of her works is hidden here somewhere in the um, library. And I'm going to ask that it be put out again. I have to work on that. But uh, your stories and your touching uh, remembrances are just so wonderful that I just couldn't help wanting to say that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I do want to say something to the young lady that asked about the uh, hoops. I did use a hoop in the middle of this, a square hoop, because you can get them in different shapes and sizes. Because when you're quilting on something large, when you get to the middle, and that's where basically where I started, Okay, it's hard to hold that together. So the, I took the hoop and moved it to different parts as I sold it. Yeah, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, hello everyone. I don't have a question, I just have a comment. Um, I was sitting here smiling because I know at least three of the ladies who are here. Um, Victoria Mizell and I go to the same church and I remember when we started a quilting group at our church and Vicki kept it going, but I remember doing, I do have a couple of squares on a, um, a quilt that we did on, on um, um, crosses. So I can say I did, did those two, some of those squares. I also want to say that Janet Byard and I were guidance counselors at Princeton High School. And I remember when she started learning how to quilt. She has the most beautiful quilts in the world. And she has some of her quilts in a book. I don't know the title, but it's a book about quilts. And she also makes bags. She just doesn't do quilts. And I know um, Gail Mitchell. Gail Mitchell and I worked on the quilt that's in the Arts Council and it's a quilt of noted African Americans in Princeton. So I just want to say that I, I was in a quilting group with them, but I'm not a quilter as well as they are, so I kind of dropped out. And so one of these ladies up here called me about two years ago. Oh, you are the one. And then I contacted uh, Vicki right away. So I never joined, but I'm just proud of those who are here. And uh, that's it, thank you. Uh, Tony Jean Dickerson says, so proud of my Quilty sisters. You did a fabulous job. I'm so happy to be on this journey with you. Uh, another anonymous attendee says, can you tell us why the G-Bend is important? G's Bend? Oh, sorry, G's Bend. Well, I can tell you why it was important to me, because it definitely influenced um, the way that I quilt. I felt that the G's Ben quilters had a unique eye um, and the way that they put together their patterns and their colors spoke to me so deeply. I, I remember crying the first time I saw one and I got to hold it in my hand. Um, but their um, type of quilting is more improvisational 
And um, that's something that the modern quilt movement has really embraced. And here these ladies have been doing it for a very, very, very long time. Um, we actually play, paid tribute to G's Ben, uh, the quilters, by doing uh, small quilts ourselves. Uh, our interpretation of what they do so extraordinarily well. Uh, the one quilt that was up that Jane had when she was talking about the lines and the patterns, that was her original quilt. It wasn't a copy, that was her own design uh, to pay tribute to G's Ben. So they hold a lot of importance in the quilting world and they are known throughout the world now, thank God, and they are really a treasure and they're starting to you know, disappear because they're, they're older ladies, but um, you've got to look them up and look at their quilts, they are amazing. Thank you. Uh, okay, we can have, yep, one more question. What size quilts do you normally make? I, you know, if I wanted one, I didn't see any queen size bed quilts. So what, why do you, what size do you make and why do you choose to make that size quilt? Do I know what I'm talking about? I'll tell you that. <laughs> my, my favorite size to make is a throw and that would be about 60 by 72 because anything bigger than that is really hard for me to handle. Um, and I think I can get twin size batting out of that size. But it's, it, it's good, one person, it's big enough for one person to wrap themselves in if they're gonna be reading or watching television. And that's usually the application that I'm, if I make them for someone that I, I make them for. So that's my size. I've never made a bed size one yet. I keep promising my husband I will, but I haven't yet. <laughs> Uh, 60 by 72. 72. Okay. That's, that's for, me, for my. But you, you know, you can make them sure. as tiny as this or as big as king size. Sure. So. I have made larger quilts, but then I have to send them out to have them quilted. I just, I just can't manage it um, because they, I mean, unless you have a long arm machine at home um, trying to do a you know, 90 to 102 inch quilt uh, on your domestic machine is really taxing. People do it, but it is really, really difficult. It's hard on the neck and the back and your arms and everything else. So that's why we have a tendency to make quilts that are twin size or smaller. I am the fan of the huge quilt. I'm working on a series of seasonal king size quilts for my bed. I've made quilts for all of my children to celebrate their milestones and graduating from college and those are usually queen size quilts. I think it's just a very personal thing. I mean there's no rhyme or reason. I've made tiny tiny quilts um, for children undergoing sickle cell that are pretty much the size of sickle cell treatment which are pretty much the size of doll quilts and it's just something for them to hold on to. Ms. Mitchell. Um, I'd like to share with you that, um, how can I say this? I made a beautiful king size Amish quilt out of patches, out of uh, squares. And usually, to be very honest with you, unless I do signature quilts or uh, photo transfers, I love kits. Quilting kits. <laughs> That's scale, okay? I love quilts that come already. So all I have to do the, in the kits, figure out, wash them, them and cut them and put them together. And one of my favorite stores is very nearby and that's where I recommend that you should uh, call and ask her. I'll talk with you later, but I, 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 could, I would suggest that unless someone else on the panel would like to say that. But I have made a huge, two huge king size quilts, but I prefer the ones that are easy to handle. But I've also been very fortunate in finding a, a long arm quilter who lives nearby. And she will, she, she has just finished completing 
long arm, about seven different quilts that I've put together. And believe me, you do not want to come to my studio. <laughs> Our son came up and surprised us from Atlanta. And I had a computer that I wanted to give him. And he said, oh, mommy, I'll go upstairs and get it. And I said, I don't think so. <laughs> because it's buried. So I went upstairs and got it. And I called him to the stairs. He came upstairs. And he looked and he ran down those stairs so fast. We, and our granddaughter came to visit us um, over the summer. And she said, she went back and told she is uh, learning how to quilt and she does a fabulous job. I'm really impressed with her. She's 16 years old. And I'm really impressed with the things that she's done. And um, she came and she was in heaven with me. <laughs> Upstairs with all my stashes. She loves it. So I just wanted to share that I, I am learning to step outside of my box, thanks to Wanda, and being more of a modern quilter. I'm a traditional quilter, but I love the group that I'm working with. I'm more of an independent person because I've been quilting by myself for years and years, and then I have many friends now, more than ever, that are very, very interested in quilting, and it's really pleasurable to see the products that they make. Um, I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, I'll ask a last question, because uh, we've been getting it. Um, okay. Do any of you sell your quilts? And um, if you do, you can. Uh, how, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you? Or not? <laughs> are you referring to the quilts that are, are currently on display or in general? Uh, either. Um, email us, Sankofa Stitchers Great. at, at gmail.com. Great. Do you have a website? Yep. You can. Uh, it's, it's a work. Our website is a work in progress. That's a complicated story. Okay. We'll that one alone. But we do respond to email very well. Yeah. You can email me, kdorman at princetonlibrary.org, and I will connect you if you can't find it on your own. Well, please join me in thanking all of these wonderful women for sharing such amazing stories. Thank you all for coming, both uh, virtually and in person. Thank you, ladies, so much.